Okay. Hey, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, so, yeah. So the topic. So the topic of my talk is exploring seasonal insects from Singapore Weather Station data. So a little bit about me. Okay. Wait, 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 huh? Okay, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm Chin Hui. Uh, I'm a data engineer at SD Engineering. Uh, my background is it was in aerospace engineering as well as computational science, spell learning. And yes, I contribute to Pandas. So, like, if you see the if you see the latest documentation for Pandas one, I did contribute to the documentation. Yeah, and I and in my free time, I also I also volunteer as a mentor at Big Data X. Okay, so yeah, Singapore. We all know the so we know the coordinates. It's like one degree uh, one degree above now the equator. Somewhere here, yeah. So, so a year is usually split into four seasons, which includes you know, spring, which, which you have all those sakuras, and you have summer, whereby people go to the beach and suntan, and then you have autumn, whereby you have very nice autumn leaves, whereby it feels very romantic, and then you have winter, which is very cold, but it's still pretty fun. But what about Singapore? Do we have nice... Flower. Do we have nice sakuras? Do we have nice maple leaves? Or do we have snow? Uh, maybe we only have snow city. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, are the four seasons just, you know, hot, very hot, extremely hot, and rain? Yeah. So boring, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, but so why not? Let's discover how many seasons we have through the data. So first, we have to extract the weather data, and because I am a data engineer and I don't believe in aggregated data that the government release, I want the raw data and stuff. So I shall go and extract the data on my own. Yeah, so. I go to data.gov.sg and I look at the API. Hey, there's an API for like for real time readings. And it's in like it's in a minute like minute scale. So every, pretty much at every five minutes you will have data. So hey, this is as granular as it gets, right? Okay, wonderful. So I go there. Yeah, it's a real time API. And then it's open data, open government data, so that means I don't need to pay money to get the data. And it's minute by minute, so very good, right? But then we have, okay, so why do I have to go through the trouble of that when we have stuff like weather and SG to tell me what's the weather today? Or like, or maybe I have very nice apps like like this like Chion's app that can download and it tells you the wind direction like oh right now like what's the wind direction is it going to rain and stuff like that but those are like those are data that are at the point at one point in time but what I'm actually looking for is trying to script data at a specific weather station and I and maybe I want a month long data to analyze. So how do I do that? Okay, so first thing first, right, when we try to use an API, we try and play around with the API first to see what output we get. So okay, look at this. Uh, okay, uh, so there's a curve for my to get the server uh, to to I uh, ping the server and see what response I get. And then there's the web and then there is the API website that I can extract data from. Yeah, look, looks okay, right? The documentation. And then I try. Okay, I just try a day, and then this, this is the result that I got. Okay, like, how, let's see how many levels there are. Now I have one, one, curly bracket, one set of curly bracket, another set of curly bracket, and then my data is all the way nested inside. For the then I see oh station ID is something, and then the reading that I want is 
also something. And then it's it's not just a J, it's not just like JSON. It's JSON, and then you also have another JSON inside. So it's a nested JSON format. So things aren't so simple anymore. And then I thought, hey, pandas has a has a read JSON, right? So it should help me. But this is what I got. So you look at the table, right? It has an index, it has readings, it has timestamp. So I want to look for when I want to look for the value in a weather station for a weather station. But it's under readings and then it's nested in the JSON. So what to do? And yeah, so since we have a JSON in the we have so since like after the pandas output, we have a JSON within the reading, right? So why not try to pass out the JSON? So the idea. So yeah, so it seems to be not so straightforward that I decided to just publish publish my code on GitHub. So it might not be perfect, but at least it does the job. Yeah, and one of the and one of the main libraries that I use to get the data will be the request library in Python. So because humans don't understand HTTP requests, so we will need a library to help us do the job. Yeah, I know I know that uh, I know like can you say don't use don't don't use not anyhow import library, but I'm sorry, I need to get the job done. So yeah, here it is. <laughs> And currently the, API, the, the currently the APIs that are supported for the library is for the for the for the code that I've created is for air temperature and rainfall. Actually I actually I also did a little bit on the humidity, but like in the interest of time I shall not touch too much into that. So there are about seventeen weather stations in total. And what and what this code does is it can scrap data for continuous time range. As well as for a specific weather station, so this will be the outer output that we as data and we as the data professionals will be more interested in. But some design considerations will be like possibly slow connection because we are making HTTP requests. So, in able to in, in order to ensure that we can we will be able to get the data despite some slow connection, I use a retry mechanism, which is from the retry library. Maybe the API is working. It gives you a uh, like code two hundred, but you have to have data inside. So this kind of edge cases, we have to handle that also. But so what I did to handle that is to return an empty data frame with the same column names as if like that, and as, as if like there was data. Just that like when you try to. When you try to get the data and you don't have data, right? it's empty. It's not even NA. You will want to get an empty data frame with the same col same column structure. And then the problem of the main problem of nested JSON, right? I want to convert it to pandas data frame. So first, I will have to extract the desired station and readings from the JSON. After which I will after which I will have to concatenate them back with the timestamp, because I still want to preserve the timestamp. I, and then I want to match with the reading as well as the weather station. So this is the approach, approach right? So remember that the output from the pandas, you have the reading stuck in the middle. So I have to extract them out, and then get the get the readings for the weather station I want. And then after which I will have I will I will merge the timestamp column. With the station, the station ID and value column. So, it, yeah, let's show a bit of a demo of what is actually happening. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's see whether this works. Okay. 
Okay. Python API. Okay. So this is the command line version. So first, we enter the date in the in a static specified format. And then we enter the number of days from the day entered. So if I want seven days, if I want day, if I want data from first to seven, right? Then I have to key seven days. And then it will tell, and then it will ask me which API to scrap from. Is it the air temperature or rainfall? So let's or the, maybe like the relative humidity. So maybe let's try scrapping for air temperature. Okay, so while this is running, right, I will elaborate, I will show a little bit more about the code. Okay. So, okay. So, just a bit of like what I will be doing, right, is that, so we have uh, about 17 weather stations that will measure air temperature. And the, the weather station that I'll be interested in is Changi Airport. So the, the code for Changi Airport, the Changi Weather Station is S24. So that is what I will be keying in. And after that, I will after that, right, I will be making use of the data that I've scrapped to do a time series analysis of the weather station data to have a rough to and then to be able to analyze some trends and patterns from the weather, from the weather station data. So let's take a look at the status first. Okay, it's a bit lag. Yeah, a bit lag, but never mind. So let me show what I mean by, like, uh, okay, let me show you, like, the internals of the code that I use for the scrapping of the data. So first thing first, right, I, like, there's the retrying I read, and... And then one of the edge cases that I encountered was that sometimes when I key in a date, like a date range, let's say from like that's 2019 April, like, like somewhere in between as a public holiday, and then you don't really have data, and then the, and then the application will just freeze, will like freeze there for some time. And then when I debug, I realize that it is because sometimes you just don't have data, even though you have a code 200. That means if a code 200, like I have a code 200, right? It is not a problem of you are not being able to access the API because the API is healthy. So it would mean that you have to cater for such edge cases that, do, that maybe your API is healthy, but it's just don't have data. Another th and then when I showed the switch mechanism whereby you can key in the, okay, so there's an option of whether you want to use air temperature, rainfall, so that is, so we don't have, so in C we have the uh, auto switch cases, but in Python we don't have. Uh. So, right, so right now I have to keep using Elif, Elif, Elif. So imagine that I have, I have five APIs to handle. This is what it's going to look like. Okay, and then, yeah. So, Okay, let me just take a little look at the status of the data. Yeah, so right now, right, we are at the switch. So right now, after scraping from seven, seven days, the station IDs are shown. So as mentioned, I will be scraping from the Changi weather station data. So that is S24. <coughs> so at this stage, all the weather station data from 1st first, first May to 7 May has been scrapped. So all the JSON, everything has been, has been already taken from the API. Now, the, now what I'm doing is trying to extract from, extract that particular weather station data. So which is what I showed earlier about trying to extract the specific weather station data from a nested JSON. So this will take quite a while. In the meantime, since this is not going to affect my workflow very much. I will be showing another notebook, which is okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Ja. Yeah, this is okay. So this next one that I will be showing will be extracting seasonal trends. So as I mentioned that the analysis period will be from about 2017, start of 2017 to December 2019. So the objective is to see whether there are any seasonal trends that can be observed over the past three years. So after I got the data, and then, and then tried to plot raw data, which looks like a mess actually. So this diagram actually shows that your, temp that your temperature, air temperature data is actually within a fairly narrow range over the past three years. So, right, so like maybe we look at like the we look at the plots for other countries. You will see a more significant cycle, but in this case, the cycles do not seem very clear. So to do so to be able to decipher the cycles, we have to do some and do some like do some magic. So after I did some some sampling, right, then you can see that the trends are a little bit clearer. You can see some. You can see like some ups and downs. So the temp so you can see the trial will be around December, January, and the temperature will actually get a little bit higher in the middle, and it will fluctuate again towards the end of the year. And for rainfall, it's not so clear. So, and then another and to extract the seasonality, we will have to analyze by month. So what I did was I grouped, I grouped the data by, by month, and I did a box plot. So if we can see from the box plot, right, if we look at month-wise box plot, and we look at the mean temperature, and we look at the median temperature for each of the months, you can see that you can see the trend of lower temperatures in January, in December, and then slight, and then increasing temperatures towards towards the middle. And how about a yearly? Yearly view, a year view of the air temperature. So you can see that this is for 2017, right? You, it will be at around 20, about 28. And then 20, 2018 is not so similar. It's, um, it's, you can see a little bit of a deviation, but the median is, doesn't change much. But if you look at last year, it's getting hotter. You are having an increasing trend over the past three years. So there is some form of global warming, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, that, and, and, that, and then plus, if we look at the monthly rainfall from December 2016 to December 2019, we look at December 2019, we have a lot of rainfall. And then you can see that from a running rainfall, you can see like certain very short bars here and there, like for 2018 and 2019, which suggests that the drier months are getting drier, the wetter months are getting wetter. And we also say the rainfall occurs with temperature, yeah. If you have no rain, it's going to be hot. If you have rain, it's going to be really cold. So if you have rain, right, please manage your energy consumption. Then num and another interesting fact is that monthly number of rain days, it seems to be that you don't really have a lot of rain days nowadays, like for 2019. Whereby if you look at 2017, 2018, right, the December, our rain days, we have a lot of rain, rain days. Uh. So it kind of means that we have less rain days, but the rains are getting heavier. Yeah. Okay, so let me see what... Yeah, so it's done. And in a way, so after I show all those patterns, right, how many seasons do you all think that Singapore has? Three. Two seasons. Two seasons. Mm, any, any more answers? <coughs> it's about two. Uh, about two seasons, actually. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it's uh, that's that's it. Now, the main key takeaway is if your data is not so easy to take, right? Just build a tool, lah. 
and then you make your life easier. Yeah, so take picture. <laughs> yeah, so you can reach out to me and all those, and my project is at over here. Yeah, so it's something that I'm developing on and off. Uh. So I might make some changes in there. Oh, yeah, and last thing, last thing, last thing, uh, announcement. <laughs> yeah, you all know about the, the Global Diversity CFD Day. Yeah, so yeah, I'll be there. So if you want to speak, at, if you want to be here speaking or you want to speak at a conference, right, and you need help, come here. <laughs> yeah. Okay.